I say often as a startup founder, a founder of color, and leading a technology company in Canada building AI smart sensor IoT solutions for the commercial trucking industry, that it has always been the process that has seen me through the best of situations and some of the most challenging of situations in life. The prize or the goal at the end of going through the process is often the result of hard work, dedication, determination, and perseverance that goes into everything needed to be done to earn it. And sometimes the process one goes through is also fraught with failure and disappointment along the way. Now, every great somebody became that way upon their mountain high pileup of failures and disappointments beneath them. They can proudly stand tall on their mountain high pileup of failures and disappointments because that is what true success requires above all else. The first lesson of respecting the process, not the prize, was when I realized I wasn't going to go to university to become an engineer upon graduating from high school. This lesson is all about patience, perseverance, and fortuitousness. You see, I simply didn't have the grades in mathematics, nor the confidence in my math abilities at the time to get into engineering at the undergraduate level. Instead, I went to college and earned a diploma in electronics engineering technology. Upon graduating from college, I was debt free and working years sooner than my peers who went to university to obtain an undergraduate degree and a mountain of student debt to go along with it. It was great to earn good money to support the home and my future. My mom always said, sometimes we must take the more circuitous route in life to achieve our dreams. And I tried my best at the time to truly understand what this meant because I was still very young. I eventually got into a distance education bachelor's degree program in New South Wales, Australia, but had to drop out during my first year to start a family. Now, doing a distance program while starting a family at the same time proved very challenging at the time. So I took a leave of absence from school and promised myself that one day in the future that I would, when the time and situation were better in my favor, that I would complete my studies. The second lesson about respecting the process, not the prize, is that there is a process and that it's there for a very good reason. This happened often when I'd mentor new Canadians while working a full-time career at one of Canada's top five banking institutions in Toronto. In Chinese culture, this process is often called in Mandarin Chinese, Huang Jin Zhi Lu, or the golden path, which is the path that leads to a good life or good outcomes. I was a volunteer mentor at the Triac Mentoring Pro Program or partnership, helping new Canadians, immigrants acclimatize themselves to the Canadian way of life, cultural norms, and the process of preparing their resumes and interview skills to land a job in the information technology sector to which they had both education and experience in their native home country. Although I would talk straight to them about how things worked here in Canada, some of my mentees would resist and push back for many reasons. Many of my mentees trusted me, but didn't trust the process they needed to adhere to in order to be successful at landing a job in their field and building a good life for themselves here in Canada. For the ones that did, however, I would get a phone call with my mentee screaming at the top of their voice, thanking me for helping them get a job in their field in about three months time. For the mentees that didn't, however, I would get a call from my mentee with frustration, disappointment, and stubbornness towards the process that the advice that I gave them for their success. I would give them several examples of the mentees that I've helped in the past go through the process successfully. They were men and women who one day decided to uproot their entire lives to build a new, a new life for them here in Canada. As, uh, and success was their greatest desire and the outcome they wanted. But they had to trust me as their process guide 
or process Sherpa to help them achieve their goal. The latter, those who feared the unknown, had little faith, or didn't trust me to guide them through the process, were always difficult to deal with, and I took it very hard sometimes. I also realized that I couldn't help all of the mentees succeed in getting through the process because that's just how it was sometimes. Again, failure was sometimes a part of the process and outcome of helping new Canadians get a good start to their new life in Canada. The process was always there to serve them and to help me guide them through it. The third lesson of respecting the process, not the prize, is all about humility. When I mentored a mentee that had to drop out of graduate school in the USA, I had to help him first overcome the emotions around the failure of dropping around out of grad school, and then afterwards, him ending up in community college to pursue something he really wanted to learn, and that was machine learning and artificial intelligence using Python programming. Now, his undergraduate major was English language studies, but his graduate degree major was computer science. Now, these two subjects couldn't be any further apart from each other, and it was a professor along his academic journey one day that said to him, why not just go for it? Well, it was a completely frustrating experience for him, which caused him to eventually drop out of graduate school as a result. I then had to help him forgive himself for dropping out of grad school and that it was all in the past and to pretend like it never, ever happened. This took at least three to four weeks of regular Zoom meetings and empathetic listening during the mentoring process to finally convince him to pretend that it never even happened. Once he was able to grieve the loss and move on, then his learning journey began from what I advise as a point of humility. I always say that I keep a lot of humble pie in my fridge and eat a slice or two every single day. That's what gives me a healthy perspective in everything I do and in everyone I meet on a daily basis. And I inform my mentee that he needs to do the same, to stock up his fridge full of humble pie too. When he heard me say this, he started to laugh to himself. And then he started to chuckle. And then he realized that I was dead serious. And that humility is where all good knowledge comes from, especially something so complex as machine learning and artificial intelligence. Although he was tutoring grade school students and high school students in how to learn to write good Python code, he had difficulty at first humbling himself to start from the very beginning of the process to learn machine learning. The learning process first began with him learning a neuron, which is the foundation of a perceptron. Then he learned how to code his first perceptron. And after that, then he progressed in his learning more and more to learn to be able to train a machine learning model to classify two distinct classes of images, like cat versus dog, or hot dog, no, not hot dog. And he learned to code it all by himself from scratch. As he explained to me via our weekly Zoom calls, his eyes would literally light up in excitement as he explained the basic concepts from a position of complete understanding. He would later present what he'd learned to his professor and to his classmates so that they'd all understand how amazing machine learning really is and the process he went through to understand it from its core fundamentals. I reminded him that he should also include his journey setbacks, his failure at grad school, and his belief system that was not getting him the results that he wanted because there are probably many people out there who went through something very similar and can certainly learn and benefit from his experience. The fourth and last lesson of respecting the process, not the prize, is to always listen with empathy. Empathetic listening as a mentor is an important skill used towards listening actively to find out what a person's key objectives are, like the pattern of personal biases and prejudices against themselves 
or how their self-talk and self-dialogue can sometimes be very negative and produce self-sabotaging failure. Our self-talk can have profound positive effects on the results we achieve or the lack thereof in our daily lives. For my mentee's past failure and dropping out of grad school, failure and negative self-talk was a success blocker that kept him from achieving his goals. It also prevented him from having a beginner's mindset to learn machine learning and artificial intelligence first at the college level. Now, by helping him respect the process, not the prize, of grieving the loss of failure and putting it behind him, it also enabled him to understand that nothing is a failure in life. Instead, I like to call it a learner, a word that I made up that can describe the opposite of failure, kind of like how anti-fragile describes the opposite of fragile, taken from the book Anti-Fragile by Dr. Nassim Taleb. I also told my mentee that in my company, interns, co-op students, and employees are encouraged to fail and share it with everyone. Celebrating failure is important because in business, there are no pop quizzes, no midterm exams, and no final exams. It's all about respecting the process of failing, learning from failure, and then going through the process again to be successful on the other side of it to deliver a product or a solution to a problem. This example I gave took a lot of pressure off my mentee's shoulders to charge ahead in learning all he could about machine learning and then presenting to me what he learned as I listened empathetically and intently to what he had to share each week. Sharing this principle with my mentee also gave him the confidence he needed to know that someone on the other side, that someone being a founder and CEO of a company that centers everything it does around artificial intelligence and machine learning, sincerely cared about what he had to say and in what he discovered each week along his journey to become a machine learning engineer. Now, I've given several examples of respecting the process, not the prize. But what does the process actually look like? What does the prize actually look like? When do we get the prize after respecting and following the process? Is this just another story of delayed gratification? If you remember earlier my talk about me not finishing an undergraduate degree, I did finally achieve it. I became a full-time student in September 2015 and graduated right here from TMU in 2019 with a Bachelor of Commerce degree in Business Technology Management and a minor in Chinese Language and Culture Studies. I can also communicate in Chinese and speak fluent Chinese Mandarin. My mentee has joined meetup groups that discuss machine learning research papers, and he's also reapplying for grad school for data science. I'm confident that he'll get accepted into a data science program one day very soon. I will end my talk with a quote from Hebrews 11.1, 1, which says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is one of the most important traits all successful people possess. Faith is also the most important value we need to see a process through to its conclusion or its result. Without strong faith, faith in respecting the process to get you to your goal, to your destination, or to realize your dreams, then we would never continue on our journey through the process now, would we? We would never realize that failure is an important part of the process. We must also realize that our network of people determines the net worth of ourselves and the value of our dreams and goals. It takes people to make people, but it requires good people to make even better people. Empathy and compassion, truth and honesty, humility and grace, these are the ingredients one needs to possess and always aspire to be on a daily basis, especially as a mentor or volunteer, 
to help make the lives of others that we really need it that much more rewarding. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to my talk today.